Hey guys, welcome to this video. Um, it's been a while since I've made a video that is not aligned with the series. So I've been making videos about PyTorch, I have to make videos about Halide, but it's been a while since I just made a video about you know, a topic that I found interesting. And today is that. So today I will talk about or work through and demonstrate all the different kinds of normalizations there are uh, in deep learning. And this is pretty fascinating. So, um, and while preparing for this video, or while trying out a bunch of things, I realized um, some differences in behavior in how pi all these frameworks implement batch normalization and um, other normalizations. So I hope it's a good learning experience or it's a good revision for all of you all as well. So let's begin. So first of all, why do you need normalizations? So without normalization, either your um, activations would grow very large or, or would go down. So either they would, you know, um, uh, you know, go towards infinity, they'll keep on adding up or multiplying. So if positive numbers keep on multiplying, they might grow larger or they might grow very small. So, which is bad, you know, networks are bad whenever the values are very small or the values are very large. So neural networks tend to work very well um, between this minus one to one or zero to one regime because that's where the most of that's where the weights are initialized. And um, so we want to restrict our activations between that small regime. And um, this is the way you do it is, you know, once you have your activations of out of a layer, you rescale your activations to put them in uh, to normalize them between zero to one or you know minus one to one depending your uh, depending on your application so there are various methods of doing these so by the way i assume that you you know of batch norm or you've heard of and you uh, you know know why we need it so that's why i just uh, i blazed through that explanation um, this is more about you know how do you play with the implementations and what kind of advanced normalizations are. So let's actually jump in. These are the more famous kind of implementations. So we have here batch norm, um, layer norm, instance norm, and group norm. So this this figure I got from the group normalization paper. Um, so let's see how each of them work. So if I look at oh. Before I do that, by the way, I am drinking my own beer. Um, I wish I had a you know, glass, but then you could see the color of the beer. But um, it's so this is something I brewed a couple of weeks back. It's um, it's somewhere between a hazy IPA and a hoppy heaven weizen. Does that make sense? All right. Um, good. So let's assume um, we have an a tensor. NCHW, where N is your batch dimension. So this axis corresponds to the batch dimension. This ax axis corresponds to your features, channels, and um, height and width have been rolled in this axis. So you know there you flatten height and width out because you can't um, imagine a 4D figure like you know, on a 2D plane. Okay, so with that. Um, what batch normalize, uh, normalization does is it finds the statistics across each channel. So I have a batch of n. So for I will look at all the channel values across this batch and compute the statistics, the mean and standard deviation along this. So for each channel, I will find the mean and standard deviation. So I'll find like two numbers, the mean and the, and the variance. And then my activation will be rescaled, excuse me, according to those. For the second channel, I would do the same. For the third channel, I would do the same. So uh, for each channel, I run, go across the height width and the n, and I compute the statistics. That's how batch normalization works. Now layer norm, on the other hand, computes the statistics for each sample. So let's say you have n data points. Uh, so you have the batch size of n. So for each of the data point, it will compute the statistics and then 
compute the uh, then uh, the values would be rescaled according to the mean and standard deviation of that sa sample itself so within itself now you would need layer norm in a situation where you can't do batch norm so in when you get sequential data in rnn in lstms and those kind of networks when you get sequential data that's where layer normalization works well so again for each sample you will normalize so each sample would will get its own statistics then comes instance norm now instance norm is each channel and each sample so for each channel and for each sample you will compute the statistics so for um, for n equals 1 c equals 1 I get some statistics and the same for n equals 1 c equals 2 and so on so for each of your filter or each of your channel, you will get the mean and standard deviation, and then uh, you will rescale your output like that. In group norm, you will compute statistics according to groups. Now groups are made of multiple channels stacked together. So um, if you look at layer norm, layer norm was for all of the channels. Group norm is channels belonging to a particular group. So here group one is three these three channels so that's why the normalization um, is like this so um, yeah so this is a rough overview of these normalizations now let's look at how uh, the equations look like so let me again go back to batch normalization and let's look at the figure again so for batch normalization you will compute statistics for each channel so for each channel I will um, you know check out all the HW and N values and then compute statistics so given an input of dimensions R uh, NC WH I compute the mean for each channel by summing or aggregating all the values so X I C J K represents uh, the value of the tensor at the i -th, c -th, j -th, k -th location so I sum over all the other dimensions and the, so I get per channel mean and because uh, this is the number of elements I have n times w times h so um, so I compute mean per channel and then I compute my standard deviation per channel so um, value minus the mean square and then I divide by the number notice it's the number it's not the number minus one so the Bessel's correction isn't um, I don't remember if the Bessel's correction is over n or over n minus one but then you know uh, the, there's no minus one here and this, this distinction will become kind of important um, and now so now once you have obtained the corrected values now the output for each channel so this should be x cap c would be x of um, for each value in a particular channel would be the value the current value minus the mean of the channel and divided by the standard deviation of the channel rather the variance of the channel um, this epsilon has been added for numerical stability you don't want uh, division by zero so this is how you normalize um, your activations and this is how you compute the statistics again batch normalization is with respect to um, all the uh, to per channel so batch normalization is a per channel thing all right so um, well I forgot to add this bit here so I just added it now now once you have um, the new activations these normalized activations you scale and shift them so um, basically the final output is um, this normalized value times gamma plus beta so now the scaling and shifting are learnable parameters of your um, network so these this is like the bias and this is like the weight um, they are needed to you know a network might prefer having values between minus two or minus two and minus one or whatever it might prefer so this gives the network the freedom to scale my distribution so this will um, scale and uh, move my distribution so that's why there's just added freedom uh, to the network uh, right 
So this is how batch normalization looks. Now let's look at layer normalization. So for layer normalizations, I mentioned that you look at each each batch and you compute statistics within a batch. And then that's what uh, you use for computing the activations. So the mean and the standard deviation for each batch are computed by aggregating the values of the batch together. So, and they're divided by the elements, which is CWH. So you compute the mean of the batch and then the standard deviation of the batch. And then the same, uh, you use the same formula for normalizing your data. And then finally scaling and uh, same again, you have the weight and bias. So these are again, the learnable weights. So all these layers or all these normalization techniques have two learnables, two sets of learnables. Um, right, so layer norm, you compute across each, um, each sample. Right, and also notice that um, here also the division doesn't have a minus one, so it's over n. You know, it's the whole sample and population variance uh, distinction. Now we look at instance normalization. Um, instance normalization was per channel and per batch. So for a, for a particular um, batch or for a particular sample, I look at a channel and compute statistics with respect to it. So again, uh, here you can see the mean for a particular sample in the batch and for a particular channel is computed by aggregating the values of height and width. For that, um, there should be, the second letter should be a C. So it should be NC and then JK. Uh, same way you compute the standard deviation and then um, rescale the value. Again, you get uh, some weight and bias. Again, so here your means are computed for each channel and each element of the batch. That's why it's an instance. Finally, we, so you see like um, layer normalization and um, instance normalizations and then group normalizations are like, you know, one kind of the same thing. So um, instance is at one end of the spectrum, layer is the other end of spectrum and group norm is in the middle. So, um, I, I feel like these are like kind of um, more or less the same thing. Um, while batch is something completely different because there you're doing each per each channel. So you're looking across the batch to reduce the variance. Um, right, so for group normalization, um, the thing is, the thing in group normalization is that you've broken your channels or you've segregated your channels into groups. So um, NCHW, becomes n times g times c prime times wh where g times c prime is equal to c so what that means is um, the number of groups times the number of channels per group is equal to my original number of channels so i have so here i let's say i have three channels in a group and then i'll have two groups so two times three is six and that's the total number of channels so um in this case, you would normalize um, per batch and per group. In instance, it was per batch and per channel, so NG. So um, yeah, so you would sum over the remaining dimensions, same thing for standard deviation, and then you rescale your score, and then finally scale and shift. So this is how, um, this is kind of how all the different normalizations work. Now that you've seen the theory or seen a lightning introduction to, of the theory, let's jump into some coding. Um, let's let's see it in practice. Uh, the framework doesn't matter, so I'll use PyTorch, but I just want to show you how um, each of these things look like. So uh, let me jump into a Colab notebook. Okay, so I pulled up um, Google Colab over here. And now let's look at the documentation for batch norm. It says 2D over here because you could have like a 3D version of batch norm as well and a 1D version of it as well. So the batch norm um, 2D requires number of features as input because remember batch norm is per channel. So you need number of channels as input. This epsilon is um, 
the numerical stability factor. Um, momentum is something that I will mention in a bit. Track running stats, you kind of, because, um, okay. So batch norm has two modes, training and evaluation. You'll see this, is, this in action. So in training mode, the statistics are different. And then uh, because while training, you will pass multiple batches, right? So you kind of want to keep a running mean and running statistics. So, so this uh, option will, uh, by default, it's true. So it'll keep track of run -ins, running statistics. And then finally, when you are in evaluation mode, the final statistics will be used. The final, you know, after the running statistics, whatever they've accumulated, they will be used in computing um, uh, the activations. Now, momentum is how you, momentum tells you how you want to keep the running statistics. So here you can see the new mean would be one minus momentum times old momentum plus the momentum times the new thing. So it's a way of keeping the running mean. And um, a fine basically tells you whether uh, you want the learnable parameters. So when I said learnable parameters in the slice, they were gamma and beta. They were the uh, weight and bias or the scaling and shift factors. Right. So, um, okay. So let's, let's jump into it. So let me uh, import torch. Let me import numpy. Uh, let me see if you can see. All right. Okay, good. Now let me create um, a dummy input and I will create an input of a very specific value so that it's easy for us to handle. Now you see I'm creating a tensor of dimension 2222. Two, two, two. So N is 2, C is 2, W is 2, H is 2. And then what I'm going to do is for, um, no, the first channel is going to be um, identity. The so first channel of the first sample. Second channel is going to be uh, oh, torch. I'll make it two times identity. Now, oh, what am I doing? Right, now the first channel of the second sample, I want it to be same. And then um, the second channel of, oh, sorry. Now it makes sense. So this is um, first sample, first channel, first sample, second channel, second sample, first channel, second sample, second channel. And I'll do three. And then let's output this. So good. So you can see the, so this is the first sample. It has two channels of two by two, two by two. And then this is the second sample, which has two channels, two by two, two by two. Awesome. Now let's create a batch normalization layer. So um, to um, torch.nn.batch norm. Uh, 2D and let me specify so how many channels we, we want two channels um, I want momentum to be one because you know I, I don't want to compute that that you know the that running statistics I want to be um, done with momentum one um, um, so in this case uh, the aggregation so when I said said momentum to be one the aggregation would be uh, so the new value would be completely x of t. Uh, not the right thing to do, but then uh, in, in our small example, I want to set momentum to be one just to show you guys. Um, but in general, keep momentum low, like 0 0.1. And um, what else? Um, yeah, that's this is pretty much it. Now, what I'm going to do is I've created this layer. Um, let's pass um, the input through it and see what we get we get something. <clears throat> now, let's see if we can make sense of this. Right, if, if so what batch norm would have done 
it would have computed um, the mean and standard deviation of the first channel so this and this first channel across all the samples and then for the second channel across all the samples and then compute its statistics so let's see what batch norm layer what does the batch norm layer contain so let's check out its state dict so it has weights and biases now the weight is a two dimension one one because uh, there are two channels right so that's why one one bias by default it start up, starts off at zero now we have also a running mean and a running variance now okay so this is the mean this is for the first channel this is the variance for the second channel now um, let's check if the values are correct right let's let me, let, let's try to reproduce this particular one um, I go so basically I have to do the out the original value minus the mean divided by the variance um, right right I just realized that I think in the previous slides I um, uh, I switch standard deviation variance so standard deviation is the square root of variance so um, apologies for that i just realized by looking at this um all right so so yeah um let's jump in um okay so right so we will reproduce this particular we'll try to see this particular value now the output is so the original x is zero so I get zero minus mean now mean for the first channel is 0 0.75 and then I need to divide this by the square root of the variance and then the variance is this particular thing and let's see um, oh I should do import numpy as np and then this should work so I get negative 8.66 huh which is not equal to negative 0 point uh, whatever 9045 so what's going on here um, before I tell you that let's look at um, another different thing we will look at um, a different mode of batch normalization which is so this is the training mode now we will look at the evaluation mode for batch normalization all right so i will set um, bn dot eval and once i have that i will pass in the input again um, all right so let's run that and look what we have here so First of all, um, the numbers are completely different. So if I go up um, here, it's some values, but now it's something completely different. So what's what's going on? Um, and now you see it's negative eight four six one, which is kind of closer to what we had. So um, oh, I just realized I made some error. Um, if I choose the variance, let me put the correct variance. And um, yeah, so our values completely match. So from the running mean, if I used the statistics from the running mean, um, I completely am able to, I'm, I am able to reproduce this. Interesting. So what has happened is, um, right. So in evaluation mode, um, you're not training anymore. So in evaluate, so running mean keeps a track, keeps the track of, um, uh, you know, over the course of the training, what's the mean that has been observed, and over the course of the training, what's the standard deviation or variance that was observed. Variance. I need to be, um, I need to be uh, careful. So um, now with those things in hand, you will compute the outputs. That's the evaluation mode. So with the final running mean and the final variance, that's what you'll use to compute the output. However, 
when you are doing training you will um, compute the output this output is based on the statistics of the batch that was given it does not depend on the running statistics because the running statistics indicate the entire training that has been done till this point but this output is based on the statistics of um, of uh, the current batch that was processed so okay so that's the difference now why are these values different because um, right now I have passed only one batch so for one batch they should match right so what's what's going on now that now the uh, the key difference is um, when you do in training mode batch normalization is computed the, the variance is computed by dividing by n where in um, so when you do that so let's see uh, so let's compute the variance right um, what I'm gonna do so I'll compute the variance of the two channels right so um, let's see online variance calculator right so I will input the values of the two channels so I had four zeros two ones and two twos and now we want the population variance so let's calculate um, right so one one two two um, right so the variance came out to be 0 0.829 okay let's go back this is different from the running variance mean doesn't matter because mean is always divided by the number of samples but the running variance is now different because running variance was computed using n minus 1 um, and now when I perform the computation um, sorry let me see I uh, computed for this for this um, give me one sec to figure out what oh yeah I, I just realized um, sorry the variance is 0 0.6875 so I need to divide by um, square root of 0 0.6875 right now when I do it I get negative 0 0.9045 which is exactly this so that's the difference to keep in mind in training mode um, you only use statistics of the batch that is given to you and the variance is computed uh, without the Bessel correction however in the evaluation mode um, you take the take into account the Bessel correction and then you also um, do it on the running mean and running variances so this is how um, and that's why in the formulas that I showed you there was no n minus 1 for any of the formulas now batch norm is the only tricky bit layer normalization and um, uh, instance normalization they uh, they kind of work um, so there so batch norm has two different behaviors training and evaluation layer norm and instance norm don't have that it's because they don't work across batches so even group norm uh, all these three they don't so they they just have one mode of execution and then we'll now look into that so let's look at layer norm so I will create um, layer normalization layer oh before that let's first look into um, the documentation All right. Um, so the layer normalization takes the uh, as input normalized shape. So basically, this means the shape that um, you need to normalize by. So here you you specify the dimensions of the shape um, of the blue block. So basically, C H W. Um, uh, the dimensions across which you'll compute the normalization features and then element or um, let me explain this again so normalized shape is um, so you give it the shape across which you will compute your statistics so in this nchw array um, layer norm was for each sample you will compute the statistics within sample so you will aggregate all the values of the sample so we, for each sample the dimensions would be c times h times w so that's why um, epsilon is the same element wise affine um, basically again tells you whether uh, you want learnables or not 
and that's pretty much it. All right, so let's uh, let's jump into layer normalization, and um, let's do layer. Uh, sorry, torch dot uh, layer norm, and then I will pass my CHW dimension is two comma two comma two, and um, that's pretty much it. Now let's pass the input and we get the value. So um, I kind of want to I want to show you. Um, so layer normalization statistics are computed per batch. So let me work. Um, let me just, you know, work out one of these to show you that this is actually working. So remember. The mean and standard deviations were computed per sample. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to compute the mean. Um, how do you, how do I do this? Means across the last three dimension. Um, does this not work? Minus one, minus two, minus three. It should work, right? Um, give me a second to um, oh, it's ah, uh, it's it's dim, right? So this computes the mean across my two samples. So the mean of the first sample is this, mean of the second sample is this. Let's also compute the standard deviation. Um, I need to remember to divide by standard deviation of the square root. Uh, because, um, yeah, again, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Uh, Alright, so the standard deviation that we get is 0.8864. So now let's look at this value. So in the input, there was a zero here. So if I do zero minus mean divided by standard deviation, it I get um, give me one sec. Right. Um. Hang on. What's this? Shouldn't be. Um, am I doing the right computation? Uh, so um, I need to compute the population statistics. It's right. It's yeah. I should get this particular value. Um, M M M. Oh oh, it's not. Oh, I see. Sorry, um, I, I know the error. Okay, so this standard deviation is um, it's biased, rather. Um, so we need to remember we need we need to compute the population variances. So I need to specify um, the unbiased thing to be false. Um, right, 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 right. Yeah. So, so the division by n and n minus one is the key uh, differentiating factor. And remember, for all the normalizations, it's um, it's div so for layer norm, for group norm, for instance norm, the variance is divided by n. For batch norm, um, for one mode it's n, for the other mode it's n minus one. Um, all right. So it's eight divided by eight two nine two. When I do divided by eight two nine two, I get uh, negative zero point four four, and this is exactly the value. Awesome. So we know how layer normalization works, where you compute the statistics within um, within a sample. Finally, let's look at uh, instance normalization. I, I won't look into group norm because it kind of works the same way, but then let's just do instance normalization. So um, again, let's do Okay, so for instance normalization, we have to specify the number of features. So for an NCHW um, tensor, uh, that would be the value of C, the number of features. That's why C. 
a fine. Um, again, whether you want learnables or not, track running stats, momentum, um, all the jazz. So again, number of features should be C and the expected tensor input is NCHW or CHW. All right, so um, how do you instance not? Okay, so um, I'll just call it layer, torch, instance norm 2D, and the number of features are two because that's the number of dimensions that I'm using, and then I, I'll i show you what momentum 0.1 does this time. Um, all right, so now let me compute the input. Right, so actually, um, this the momentum wouldn't affect, but I'll show you momentum later. Let me keep momentum one because I think, uh, yeah, it should be indifference of uh, independent of momentum. But then, what what instance normalization is doing for each for each matrix? Because for each, remember, it's for each sample and each channel. So for each, um, let me show you the input as well. So for each of these, it'll compute the statistics and it'll normalize. Now, the way our matrices are, there are like you know. 1001, 2002, and so on, um, their normalizations would become something like this between minus one and one. They they have a pretty neat shape. I can I can show it to you. So let's look at this one. So here the mean is three. So again, we go to our variance calculator and I pass in um, and I compute. So what's my mean? It's 1.5 and my standard deviation is 1.5. So when I do um, 3 minus 1.5, I get 1.5 divided by 1.5 is 1. For the 0 element, I do 0 minus 1.5 divided by 1.5, I get minus 1. So, um, so instance norm pretty much works pretty straightforwardly. So for each of these uh, small matrices, we compute the, for each of the, if each of my features in each of the samples, I compute the statistics and that's what I um, do my, um, um, normalization with. Now, I just want to show you the state dict and um, sorry, what is it? Layer. Oh, are the learnables disabled by default? Oh, I see. So by default, um, there are no learnables. Let me change that. So, uh, hmm. oh, ah, let me enable that. So notice that this layer does not keep a running statistics. The same goes with layer norm as well, because running statistics is not required for um, for these layers. However, you can turn it on by this option, track running stats, which is by default false. In batch norm, that's true by default. Um, and in the same way, group normalization also works. Let me finally just show you um, the effect of momentum. So in batch norm, if I set momentum to be 0 0.1, press enter, and then I compute the values. Um, the, these values don't change much, but let me show you the running mean. So now the running mean is a decimal place further away. So it's 0 0.075 instead of 0 0.75. And the reason is, um, um, this equation. So the new momentum is 0 0.9 times the old momentum, which was 0, plus 0 0.1 times the new mom, uh, new mean. I said momentum, but mean. So momentum times mean, 0 0.1 times um, whatever the mean is, that gets you that extra decimal place, or extra 0 after the decimal. So, wow, this was a long one. But this is what I wanted to convey through this whole um, uh, exercise, you know, how these normalization layers work and the inner workings of them. So I hope this was useful in some fashion or the other. I, I mean, I'm sure like most of you know how the batch norm and all these layers work, but I hope this was a good um, revision of sorts because we worked through an example to see um, how the the 
normalizations are achieved. Before I end, I want to open the group normalization paper. And I apologize for the confusion between standard deviation and variance. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, right, so this is the paper that introduced group normalization. Now it has some interesting research, which I just wanted to point out. So yeah, this is where I took the figure from. Um, right. So here they do training. They do a comparison of training error and validation error on um, on ResNet 50. And here you can see a comparison of the performances of group norm, batch norm, layer norm, instance norm. Instance norm does the worst. Batch norm and group norm kind of do uh, roughly the same performance. Uh, even validation, batch norm and group norm kind of give a better performance than layer norm and instance norm um, here. So check out this paper. It has a you know good comparison of. Uh, it also depends on what batch size you use. So I remember uh, beyond a certain batch size, or uh, so there's a region in which group normalization is the best, and beyond that, um, batch norm becomes the best. Let me see if that's. That graph is here, right? Is this this one? Um, can't tell. But then you know. Anyway, check out the paper, um, and then you can figure out which one you want to use. It's it's all empirical anyway, so you know, try it out. All right. I hope. Oh wow, this was a forty-minute video, but I hope this was useful, and um, I will keep on making videos like this when I get time. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.